Search Talk Live with search engine optimization and marketing experts Robert O'Haver and Caleb McKelvin, powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Search Talk Live. I'm your host, Robert O'Haver, along with Caleb McKelvin. Caleb, how's it going? Going great, man. How are you doing? Good, man. We are up for another show and uh, kind of excited because we've got uh, someone on the other side of the world yeah, as right? a guest. That's pretty cool. <laughs> It's cool. It's it's cool that people even know about us over there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, so those of you tuning in for the first time, Search Talk Live is a digital marketing podcast. We talk about everything from digital marketing to search engine optimization, content marketing, social media. We cover it all. And uh, and we, we try to give a flavor for everybody. Yeah, so Caleb, do you want to add anything? Yeah, no, we cover everything, man, from uh, SEO, digital marketing, content marketing, uh, social media. It's crazy all the stuff that we've covered. Uh, if you've been listening to us for a while, uh, you've, of course, listened to all the amazing guests that we've had, uh, which you can always check those out, our past episodes yeah. at searchtalklive.com or on Spreaker, uh, which if you don't have an account there, go check it out. Not only can you find Search Talk Live there, there's a lot of awesome podcasts covering yeah. very many different genres uh, and niches there. So check us out there. But uh, yeah, we've you know, it's crazy all the guests that we've had and some like Rand Fishkin we've had several times. Uh, so a lot of great stuff, a lot of great content uh, with many special guests. And today uh, proves to uh, be the same. Absolutely. Now, I would suggest if you if you'd like the podcast, please go to our website, Search Talk Live. And like Caleb said, listen to previous episodes, uh, join our mailing list. Uh, the email newsletter, mm-hmm. uh, because we send out one every week telling about the show that's coming up and what to expect and, you know, what the topic is. Uh, and and also, when you have questions during the show, you can also do hashtag Search Talk Live on Twitter. Um, you can hash even during after a show or before or yeah. during, you can do that at any time. And we'll always go back to those questions and answer them during, the you know, either the pre the current episode or the next episode. Right. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, our guest is, like we said, on the other side of the world. (laughs) Uh, Do you want to introduce him? Yeah. So uh, our special guest today is Stephen Van Vessem uh, of Content King. Stephen, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. How about you guys? Uh, Doing great. Doing great. We really appreciate uh, you joining us. We know that different time zones, a lot of crazy stuff happening. We're glad we could make this work uh, and you can be on our show today. So uh, definitely appreciate you taking the time. Yes. Yeah, sure. Tell, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. If the people that don't know about you, tell us uh, who you are, what you do, and all this kind of stuff. All right, cool. So, yeah, uh, my name is Steve. Um, uh, I'm the CCO at Content King. Um, we're based out of Brno, the Czech Republic, uh, the heart of Europe, as they call it. Um, I've been doing SEO for about 10 years, uh, been on all sides of the table. Uh, agency side, client side, and uh, two years ago, we decided to yeah, kind of um, move from an agency into uh, the tool provider space mm. uh, because there was, uh, yeah, uh, well, we thought there was room for uh, better and, and, uh, and um, a different tooling. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we set out to, uh, uh, to build something uh, revolutionary. Cool. Yeah, so uh, I, I've been living in, in Brno with my girlfriend and son. Mm-hmm. Um, I moved last year from um, uh, yeah uh, Harlem, which is a town near Amsterdam, um, mm-hmm. and they were uh, uh, kind enough to come with me. So that's uh, that's been very good. Very cool. So let me ask you. I, I'm I'm just curious because. I mean, you're, like I said, you're on the other side of the world, and I, and I think it's fantastic you even know about our podcast, but how did you find out about us? Well, I was looking for uh, uh, webinars and podcasts about SEO, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, like we're uh, in an industry which is uh, moving so fast, so you got to keep up. Yeah. Um, and uh, a great way to do that is using uh, webinars and podcasts. Um, and as you've mentioned, you've had some some great people on the show. Mm-hmm. So I've been listening in and I thought, hey, um, I, I think I have some cool stories to share <laughs> as well. So why not just uh, shoot over an email and uh, see if I can uh, be on the show? 
that, so, is, yeah. that is great. Yeah, it's very nice. There's no boundaries when it comes right. to podcasting, and, and that's a good example. I mean, like, we get people in Australia. We've got people in Europe. We've got people in, in just all over the world. Yeah. And it, it just boggles my mind. Yeah. It's very cool. <laughs> well, let's <laughs> dig into it. Uh, yeah. Let's see. We're going to talk about SEO, the continuous process, and workflows and tools to support it. Yeah. I guess uh, where we kind of want to dive in and what some of our listeners may be, may, is, may be wondering is continuous SEO, and that's kind of our focus today. And when they hear the word continuous, some might wonder, be wondering, well, okay, well, don't I just SEO my site, as I hear so many people say? And it's kind of like, okay, there it is, and now we're good to go, <laughs> you know, because I've heard people, hey, can you SEO my site for I me? I wish it was like Yeah, right? <laughs> you know, can you SEO my site for me? And they think it's that simple. You just add some keywords and some tags, and then, hey, we're starting to rank continuous. Can we kind of explain to our, our, our listeners, when we say continuous SEO, what that means and what that process is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that's a, a very good uh, place to start. Yeah. So um, I, I think we all know um, that uh, like SEO is a long term game. Um, and I say, uh, I think we all know, but uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the clients looking for uh, SEO services don't really uh, realize that. Mm -hmm. um, so they uh, need to be educated there. Um, SEO is playing the long game. And um, when you come to think of it, like uh, imagine uh, uh, really focusing on SEO for a couple of weeks uh, and on not doing uh, SEO for a couple of months, um, you'll see a rise in traffic and it, it'll probably die out afterwards. Um, so SEO is something that needs uh, continuous um, attention, um, tender love and care, uh, as you will. Uh, and you got to, like, if you really want to move forward, you got to give it attention. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, dep depending on the competition in your industry, uh, it, can, it can be one hour a day or it can be 12 hours a day. Um, and um, uh, I mentioned that I have an agency background. So we, uh, as most agencies uh, are, uh, we're juggling around all these clients. Uh, we had so much work to do. Um, and um, I really want to optimize the entire process, automate what we could automate, and uh, basically um, have me uh, and my colleagues do all of the stuff that uh, uh, yeah, a computer wouldn't be able to do. Right. Right. Um, you know, for, you know, you say tender love and care, and that's absolutely true, and people out there might be wondering, well, okay, um, you know, if, if it's kind of a daily grind, so to speak, uh, what do those actions look like on a day? What should I be checking? What should I be focusing on? Should I have something, uh, you know, a specific task each day, each week? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> you know, what does that kind of look like? And, and what should be people, what, what should they be focusing on um, to make sure that they're staying on top of their website so they can keep that performance going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... When I look at SEO, um, um, I'm thinking about it in terms of um, dealing with change, improving on what you have, and expanding on what you have. Um, I guess um, a lot of you have heard about, yeah, uh, doing SEO means you got to have a solid technical foundation, mm -hmm. you need to have great content, you need to have good backlinks, um, and it needs to lead to authority and trust. Uh, which is all true, uh, but when you combine that with um, looking at it like uh, dealing with change, improving on what you have, and expanding on what you have, um, you kind of um, uh, you're starting to see a framework. Um, and uh, I think you touched a really good uh, subject. So, what's the kind of stuff that you should be doing, uh, like for instance, every morning? Yeah, uh, it really depends on um, the. Uh, frequency uh, with which your website's being updated. Uh, a lot of our clients, for instance, they roll out updates once or multiple times a day. Um, so you can imagine, like SEO uh, should definitely be a continuous thing. Uh, others um, uh, like do it on a weekly basis. Uh, and then I'm, I'm talking about like uh, mainly technical changes. Mm -hmm. So every time you roll out a technical change, uh, you got to make sure that um, 
uh, all of the stuff that's been changed uh, uh, is the stuff you expected to change. Uh, and every once in a while, uh, there's more stuff changing than what you really wanted to. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, uh, like, you need to uh, dig in, see if the change uh, has been correct. Um, so, like, from a technical point of view, uh, th that's all pretty important. Um, but doing that every day can become really boring real fast. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, that's something that can be automated to a great extent. Uh, so that's something we set out to do with uh, Content King. When you're talking about content, mm -hmm. um, uh, like you could be writing content yourself or have colleagues do it. Uh, maybe your client is pushing the content. Um, uh, in the end, you got to make sure that whatever you have on there is optimized. Um, uh, and depending on the frequency of the content updates, uh, yeah, uh, you need to be checking that as well. Mm -hmm. um, like some of the stuff like uh, title tags, meta descriptions, headings, and so on, you can check, check the, the technical constraints regarding the length. Uh, and whether they're duplicates and so on. Um, but in the end, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, there has to be human eye checking uh, for, hey, like, yeah, does it make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and are the right keywords incorporated, uh, the right topics incorporated in there? Yeah. Um, now, now you, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, so long story short, uh, it really depends on the uh, intensity uh, of uh, uh, the, the, the updates within the, the website and the competitiveness of, of your niche. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when making those changes, um, you know, of course you just don't want to make changes, you know, just randomly and hope for the best. When you're making those, uh, what should your plan be going into those before those changes to make sure that one, they're effective, you know, and two, you can actually monitor that change, uh, what that impact is and, you know, uh, m kind of assess everything going forward to whether you need to make more changes or, you know, whether it was good or bad, uh, how should you be pre prepare for those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, uh, um, uh, something we call release management. Um, uh, like, uh, you should have a test environment, um, test everything in a test environment. And when it's all good to go, uh, hit the button, uh, push it to production and then test it again. Um, and uh, one of the um, features I, uh, core features I love about Content King is that uh, it's a um, uh, website monitoring system. So it's always on, mm -hmm. uh, just like search engines are. Uh, they can come crawling uh, uh, every time of the day. Um, so we're doing the same thing. Uh, so when you're pushing out a release, we'll pick up on the changes immediately. Uh, and uh, we'll give you insight in, yeah, to what degree your website, your page has changed. Uh, keeping track of uh, the important SEO elements uh, uh, and stuff as well in the process, basically showing you a change log. Uh, so that's something you you got to check after the release. Right. Uh, so what has changed uh, and uh, has it been a good change or should we revert, um, uh, fix it in a test environment and uh, uh, launch it again? Um, so does does Content King provide that uh, kind of that test um, uh, platform where you can go through yeah. there before you push it? Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we we do um, uh, like the, uh, a big part of the uh, uh, like checking the technical foundation mm -hmm. um, uh, off your website and um, like the technical constraints from an SEO point of view. Uh, like titles, meta descriptions, headings, and so on. Um, and like, yeah, you won't believe the kind of stuff that we come across um, uh, uh, when uh, people push up uh, out uh, uh, updates. So we, for instance, we've seen uh, uh, lots of websites um, being released with uh, the meta robots no index uh, uh, tag still on it. <laughs> so it's uh, it's on there because it's a test environment, which right. makes mm -hmm. sense. But then it's pushed to production and yeah, it's still there. Uh, and people forget to remove it. And then the rankings tank, people yeah, start to investigate. Uh, and uh, then it's really, really handy to have a change log of whatever happened in your website. Because yeah. if you're running a, a crawl like every week, um, uh, it doesn't really um, uh, help you that much. Right. But if you can see, okay, so um, uh, February 14th, 
um, uh, uh, there were a couple of changes. Uh, you can really uh, drill down uh, and, and find the issue. Sometimes the issue is in a process, but sometimes it can be a person as well. Um, and, and having all that information uh, really helps you uh, uh, improve. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's also great too, because I mean, when you're building case studies, you know, having that change log and, and knowing what you did and when you did it and how it affected the rank and right. all that, that's fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, like for instance, currently we don't um, uh, offer rankings in our products. Sure. Uh, and that's been a deliberate choice because we think, uh, you, like everything you do, um, uh, you should do really well, uh, better than your competition. Um, uh, rank tracking is a different ball game, um, and uh, if we were to integrate that, we'd probably look for a partner there. Right. Um, but uh, being able to tie the uh, changes you made within your website to rankings, to traffic, uh, and uh, yeah, conversions uh, and revenue, uh, it's really important. And for instance, when you're uh, doing uh, some experiments, basically trying to optimize the uh, CTR mm -hmm. um, from an SEO point of view, right? Uh, you're making adjustments in titles and meta descriptions. And um, uh, like after a while, you kind of check, okay, so what's the result been? Oh yeah, these, these pages are performing a lot better, but these aren't really, uh, and you may want to change it back. Uh, like, yeah, do you still remember what the original values were for the mm -hmm. title in a math description? Did you write it down on a piece of paper or put it in a spreadsheet? Um, it, it just makes sense to have that uh, neatly organized in a tool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I think we have to take a break for our sponsor real quick, if you don't mind, uh, Steve. Sure, no problem. Give me one second. Online PR is something every company should take advantage of because it creates buzz around your business. Press releases are a great way for your company to announce new product launches, company milestones, new partnerships, or even up-and-coming events. The hard part is knowing which press release distribution service to use that has an effective distribution at a price that fits your budget. Well, I have the answer. For as little as $39, PRUnderground.com guarantees your press releases to be on Google News, DigitalJournal.com, social media outlets, and an additional 50 websites and blogs. PR Underground was ranked number two in user satisfaction out of all the other press release sites by G2 Crowd. This is one of the tools I recommend you add to your marketing tool belt for PR, marketing, and SEO at a price any company can afford. Go to PRUnderground.com. That's P-R-U-N-D-E-R-G-R-O-U-N-D.com and send out your next press release. Enter the code Search Talk Live and get 20% off your first press release. All right. Yes, absolutely. Check out PRUnderground.com uh, for your press release uh, opportunities. Also, Search Talk Live is sponsored by the Robert Palmer family of companies. You can go to Robert Palmer Companies. Dot com. Check out everything they have to offer. That is robertpalmercompanies.com. All right, back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Stephen, let me ask you. Now, you've been, in, you've been in the industry for 10 years, so you've seen these changes. But, I mean, when it comes to write, your, your platform, does it give like a quality score on content or is it just on the technical side? Um, it's on the technical side um, and the technical side of content. Okay. Um, it, if that makes sense. Sure. So we look at the technical constraints mostly, uh, but um, yeah, being able to assess content uh, is something uh, we'd love to add, um, but it's really, really to do well, mm -hmm. uh, hard to do well. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, I don't know any service that can really do that well, apart from kind of checking, hey, is uh, this keyword incorporated uh, in it? Yeah. Um, and then you like, um, uh, yeah, I'm from the Netherlands, mm -hmm. uh, so we're kind of boxed in uh, by other countries, um, speaking different languages, uh, and being able to um, uh, kind of put a uh, uh, like a mark, uh, like a quality mark yeah. on content is really hard when you're yeah ha Cross when you have to support different languages. Yeah, yeah, God, I can imagine. <laughs> But I mean, you know, like what I was saying, content has come a long way in the last 10 years. So, I mean, you, you can't do that exact match 
and just sprinkle it throughout your content and make it sound ridiculous. You know, uh, it, mm -hmm. it's really yeah. based on that quality. So, yes, um, yes, correct. So, uh, yeah, d definitely true. Uh, so something uh, we're seeing, something we're um, educating our, our users, our clients on is uh, uh, the need for great content. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like um, uh, the phrase great content has kind of gotten uh, a negative connotation. Yeah. Um, pretty general, too. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty general. Um, and um, like uh, Google ha has always been saying, yeah, if you uh, write great content, um, your uh, uh, rankings will go up eventually and so on. Um, but uh, I think we've all seen that that's not, not the case. Yeah. If you don't get um, people's attention that you have the great content, um, uh, yeah, your content's going to be forgotten. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely a combination of um, yeah producing great content and promoting that. Yeah. Well, that's key. I mean, you have to to you know escalate that to uh, amplify it to to people or you know you're you're talking yeah, to a definitely. deaf person. <laughs> definitely. And what, what makes it really interesting, like a, a lot of people look at SEO uh, as a very uh, technical profession, you know, mm. but really when you're um, talking about creating uh, great content and um, promoting that, it's all about understanding people and being able to interact with people. Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot of psychology involved as well. Yes. And for you know, like designers will be the first to say, hey, yeah, of course, duh. Um, that's a lot of, uh, yeah, the, the work where you try to create something that just works for people. But, yeah. Yeah. But there's um, also that, that thing, thing where SEO and design, sometimes they don't meet, you know, like if, if it's a bad user experience, you know, in, in the design, it just doesn't flow right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that's, uh, uh, where, uh, it gets really interesting, uh, from, um, uh, intellectual point of view. Mm -hmm. um, when you have to work together with UX designers, visual designers, uh, and SEOs to kind of produce something that works uh, for everyone. Um, and, and, and not that the, uh, uh, in the least uh, uh, the, the, the client who owns the website. Mm -hmm. um, and it requires a lot of people skills as well and being able to, um, uh, um, yeah, come to something that everyone can agree on. Okay, uh, like, yeah, uh, this is the way to go. Yeah. So, so break it down for us. Like, I mean, I mean, you the technical side is is your groundwork. That's before you do anything else. So let's walk us through yeah. exactly what Content King does. Yeah. So uh, Content King is a website uh, continuous website monitoring system, which means once we start crawling, we never stop, unless you pause it, of course. Um, our vision is that uh, search engines won't stop crawling. Uh, they will always be uh, uh, visiting websites, visiting pages and, and checking for changes and so on. Uh, and we're basically uh, doing the same thing, trying to mimic that uh, uh, as good as possible. Um, and in the process, uh, we um, track changes. So for instance, if you've made changes to your meta robots or economicals or titles, uh, meta descriptions, you name it, um, uh, we'll track it. Um, and uh, provide you with a change log. So uh, imagine this: you're uh, like you have uh, 30 clients, mm -hmm. uh, and you um, you're running an agency. You're crazy busy, uh, and every morning you just want to know: okay, is there anything really big uh, happening within my clients' websites? Um, it doesn't make sense to uh, kind of request 30 crawls from some service. Um, and then sift through it manually. You just want to know, okay, uh, at this point, is there anything that demands my attention? Um, and there's no real uh, uh, alternative out there that does that, uh, except for, for Content King. Yeah. And the reason we built that was because that's what we needed as an agency. And maybe we were a bit quirky, but yeah. Uh, we uh, yeah, were kind of discussing that with other people. And they were like, hmm, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, like, yeah, not for all of the websites that uh, we're managing, but for the most important ones, the ones that are really, really serious about uh, uh, SEO and digital marketing, you just want to make sure everything is all right. Yeah. And that's like, great. You built it. Of, you built it from a need, in-house need, you know? 
Yeah, exactly. And then we kind of, um, uh, and then we're kind of crossing over to uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, we just uh, uh, talked to as many uh, digital marketers and SEOs as we could, uh, in-house agency, uh, you name it, um, and kind of uh, pulling whether uh, there was a need. Uh, and it turned out there was. So essentially, if you were to ask me, hey, Steve, do you have any competitors? Um, uh, yeah, the answer is yes and no. Of course, there's other crawlers out there. Uh, but what we're doing is continuous crawling, and there's no other service out there that can do that. Mm -hmm. There's no service out there that will alert you if there's really big stuff going wrong in your websites, like yeah. scalable solutions. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, uh, we really have something there, and uh, we're growing really fast. That's excellent. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Yeah. yeah. So does it monitor, let's say, your site goes down? Does it when it does it hit it and give you an alert saying, "Hey, your site's down" or something like that? Or yeah, so something we're uh, gonna be um, uh, integrating is sending out the alerts, uh, emails, and text messages about big stuff going wrong. Um, and um, yeah, the site being down is a really big one. But for instance, like um, maybe you uh, want to get a, uh, an alert if your homepage title changes. Um, uh, or some of your key pages within your website. Mm -hmm. Others may uh, want to know, okay, if there's a, uh, like an um, uh, indexability issue uh, within my key pages, I want to know about it. Or if your Google Analytics tracking code uh, vanishes from your website, you want to know about it. Uh, so we're uh, working on um, um, the, the, like, yeah, the business case, basically. Okay, right. uh, what kind of situations will uh, people need um, uh, be in uh, and what kind of alerts will they need? Gotcha. So yeah. Okay. And I also see you, you you look at meta information if you have like duplicate title tags or that type of stuff. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Um, and that's like all of the uh, uh, the basic stuff you should be Broken doing. Links, yeah. Um, and where we um, uh, where we're different from others uh, is. Um, we try to turn, um, we try to provide our users with information rather than data. Sure. And there's a lot of tools out there that will give you the ability to export all sorts of stuff, and then you have to piece it together in a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. uh, some people may like it, uh, but I always think that you got to work smarter instead of harder. Sure. Uh, and it needs to scale. And you need to automate what you can automate. So we try to present people with information. Um, which is actionable and prioritized. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have 30 uh, minutes available uh, in the morning. You can basically log into Content King and say, hey, um, what's the most important stuff on my website right now um, that uh, I should be working on? Nice. So do, does, uh, forgive me, because I haven't used the, the product yet, but um, on the links, does it like does it tell you what anchor text, hey, you've got too many of the, this or... That type of thing? Um, we do on page, so okay. we don't um, look at uh, external links. No, I'm talking about uh, internal, like, you know, uh -huh. yeah. pages linking so, internal. Yeah, so we uh, uh, kind of show you uh, the internal linking structure of your website. So, for instance, uh, when you look up a page, you see how many pages are uh, linking into it with what anchor text. Mm -hmm. Um, how many um, uh, pages are going, uh, outbound links uh, you have, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we always um, look into uh, pages that aren't linked anywhere as well, mm -hmm. uh, like the so-called orphans. It's always interesting. Uh, you will not believe the amount of websites we're monitoring that um, have valuable pages uh, only included in the XML sitemap. And then people are wondering why they aren't ranking that well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, them not being part of the like the the structure of the website in the first place uh, is a big factor uh, often. Very cool. Yeah, so we do all of that as well. Gotcha. Very nice. Uh, well, let's kind of talk about more a little bit about continuous SEO and kind of dive into the analytics aspect. Uh, it, as far as what you need to be doing, how much can your analytics from Google Analytics, Search Console? Uh, how much information can that give you on updates you should be making, changes you should be making, and uh, kind of monitoring that uh, continuously? Yeah, um, very good question. Uh, again, it really depends on the market you're in and the amount of time you have available. But 
um, uh, like uh, if I'm working on a very uh, uh, important website, uh, I'm checking that daily. Um, uh, Google Search Console data is usually uh, a bit delayed, uh, but Google Analytics data is pretty much real time. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, I would say uh, Search Console, uh, like everyday analytics, um, um, yeah, a few times a day. And the, the kind of stuff that I would be focusing on is uh, um, from a Google Analytics point of view, uh, like are uh, the right pages uh, getting traffic? Are they converting? Like Google Analytics uh, for me is a lot about uh, tying in uh, uh, tying the um, uh, the traffic uh, together with the uh, results, because um, uh, visitors on your website uh, mm -hmm. isn't enough to stay in business, of course. So it's all about okay, uh, are the uh, the people I'm getting on my website are they engaged? Are they uh, uh, requesting more information from me? Are they signing up for newsletters? Are they filling in contact forms or call me back forms? Are they buying stuff? Uh, if you're running an e-commerce platform, um, so uh, yeah, um, uh, that's uh, what I would be looking for primarily in Google Analytics. Um, something that's pretty interesting. Um, uh, I may go a little bit off script here, but um, some of our clients implemented AMP, and um, we uh, we're kind of uh, building business cases together with them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and um, for some of the websites, uh, AMP is working out really well. Um, they're seeing a jump in traffic, uh, somewhere between ten and twenty percent. Um, but the the quality of the traffic is a bit different from like quotes uh, quote unquote regular um, mobile traffic mm -hmm. uh, because the engagement uh, is a bit uh, lower in general from what I've seen. Really? Um, I'm hearing similar stuff uh, uh, from others, uh, but of course it really depends on uh, the market you're in and you know, the kind of business you have. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. So. Um, yeah, you should not only be looking at, okay, uh, how many visitors do I get from uh, my, uh, like, uh, uh, how many organic traffic do I have? But, um, like, okay, what are they doing when they get on my website? Right. Are mm -hmm. they engaged? Right. Um, going back to Google Search Console, uh, I uh, would uh, check, the, like, the crawl errors. Um, it's always good to combine multiple sources of information when it comes to these kind of things. Uh, the crawl stats are very interesting as well. Um, the degree to which Google has uh, indexed all of the pages from your XML sitemap, mm -hmm. uh, really useful as well. Uh, of course, um, uh, backlink information, um, the uh, link shown by Google, uh, it's only uh, a subset of the data they have. Sure. Um, but if you combine that with other services such as uh, Majestic or AREFs, um, uh, yeah, you can really keep track of, okay, uh, who's linking to me. Hmm. Um, and thinking about it from a continuous point of view, uh, it's of course interesting to see, okay, uh, what new uh, uh, websites are linking out to me and which links were lost. And um, yeah, dig into, okay, uh, why? Uh, are they lost? Mm -hmm. um, did someone uh, uh, screw up, uh, delete a page, or uh, did something else happen? Yeah, and I, I mean that's why I I think tools like Content King and all that are are, are important because I mean like me and Caleb, I can speak for Caleb probably. We use God three, four different tools at a time. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to quantify the data and make sure everything's accurate. I mean, like, right. for instance, Majestic gives a better uh, backlink uh, database than, you know, maybe the others, but uh, it just seems to be larger. Uh, so, I mean, you have to go different places to get the different things, and, and having mm -hmm. all these things in your toolkit is just vital, I think. Yeah, exactly. And um, like when you're looking at the amount of tools available in our industry, it's mind boggling. Yeah, there's so much services out there, uh, and it's pretty hard to distinguish uh, the, the differences. Yeah. Um, so, for as you mentioned, yeah, Majestic uh, has a large, uh, 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 like the largest database. Um, I'm not sure. I like, yeah, I haven't checked the the latest data. I know Arefs is doing pretty good. Yeah, they're uh, good. And, 
and and there is uh, um, differences in the freshness of the data as well. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, yeah, the uh, HRF guys and uh, Dixon Jones would be able to explain it a lot better. But yeah. uh, I think they they also have their own focus points, like regarding industries. Right. So some may be better at certain markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of um, yeah, uh, they complement kind of each the, other. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So a lot of people I I talk to a lot of my clients they use both. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, for them, it's also hard to kind of distinguish. Okay, uh, yeah, what tools uh, should I be be working with? Because there's uh, 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 AREFs uh, uh, is, for instance, becoming increasingly uh, uh, like a all-in-one uh, uh, solution. Yeah. Um, but you need to ask yourself: uh, Are am I going to use all of the features they're offering for the uh, specific tasks at hand, or should I be using something else, which is better at, at certain aspects? Um, yeah. I sometimes wish some of these tools they had to kind of a la carte. Like, okay, I need this and this, but I don't need this and this and this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they probably take pieces. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually a great idea. Um, so, uh, like, I can see our own uh, uh, suite expanding in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a service like Intercom is doing really well. Uh, they're basically offering, um, uh, uh, yeah, the the a la carte menu. You can um, kind of activate whatever you need. Right. So it's a support system, um, but you can also do uh, like marketing automation. I call, it, I think they call it like Intercom Acquire, uh, and and uh, include uh, chat on your website and so on. So mm-hmm. they basically try to cover everything and try to excel uh, in every bit of it. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's that's what we need in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because like, I mean, for example, let's, well, I don't want to name any names, but I mean, you may need, you know, everybody goes to HRFs or, or uh, Majestic for link uh, profile, you know, to find out the link profiling and stuff uh, for the most part uh, because of the, the size of the database and the, the information they give. But I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's, there's, there's these others that are out there that are, Fantastic. I mean, they're they're awesome. I'm not saying anything bad about them, but it just just to be able to, even for smaller businesses, it might be better because then they, you know, instead of paying X amount of dollars a month, they're paying you know a smaller amount because they're only using a certain tool that mm-hmm. is focused on what they're trying to do. But I yeah, don't know. I yeah, don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I think when you look at the market, uh, basically at the uh, uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to do. Um, uh, something uh, w- with SEO, right? Yeah. And they need a, a tool which is pretty easy to use and which comprises everything they need, like mm-hmm. rankings, uh, some on-page stuff, right. uh, and some backlink information. Uh, I think there's tools out there uh, that can fill that need, uh, and they, they do pretty well. Yeah. But when you kind of level up and you kind of learn and you become meteor senior, um, you're switching to other tools because yeah, yeah, yeah your your need for data uh, and insights uh, changes. Yeah, or data. You kind of abandon the tools that <laughs> have. we're just geeks about data. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, you just gotta go to the right. Pl- I mean, you just gotta go to the place that provides that mm-hmm. biggest picture. There, you know. Yeah, because uh, a lot of it is driven by competition as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, you need to keep up and, and stay uh, uh, ahead. Uh, and that's something that um, like, is an important part in like what I call the continuous SEO process as well. Um, so is there um, any new developments you can benefit from, such as, for instance, um, AMP or, uh, I don't know, using structured data, uh, structured markup, mm-hmm. uh, open graph, Twitter cards, um, like new developments uh, you can benefit from. Uh, like, for instance, the, the, what I was just talking about, the, uh, the clients that uh, implemented AMP mm-hmm. uh, and, and seen a jump in traffic. Um, like, you can say a lot about the AMP project. There's people, a lot of people hating. Um, uh, but in the end, if they're getting 10 to 15% more business out of it, that means their competitors are not getting it. Yeah. Um, and to me, that just looks like a good move. Sure. Google's definitely backing it. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, yeah, they're one of the front runners in yeah. the in the project. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you just gotta try stuff as well. And the same goes for uh, when it comes to content and links. You gotta try new stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and yeah, just get inspiration everywhere uh, you can get it. Uh, go to conferences, um, listen to these kind of podcasts, uh, casts, uh, and webinars, and read blogs, and so on. Yeah, yeah just uh, get immersed, and then uh, the rest will follow. Yeah, yeah. So one thing you didn't mention in the beginning when you introduced yourself, uh, where is Content King? What's the website? So uh, the website is b b e content king dot com. Mm-hmm. And then you can get all the information there. And then, like, we also put a link in the uh, event. Yeah. So you, if you want to go check, there, you all can right, great. check it out. Yeah. yeah. Go searchtalklive.com and check that out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Depending uh, on the, the, the language you're looking for, uh, we, we uh, have a localized approach. Uh, so we have a, a Dutch, a French, uh, a Czech, a Spanish, and an English uh, version of the website currently. Nice. Um, Going to be expanding in the near future. Uh, so yeah, depending on your need, uh, you can uh, yeah find whatever you need. I was uh, you must have read my mind because I was going to ask you that because you do have different <laughs> you know so many languages around you that you know that yeah how are you approaching I think that's, that? Uh, it's a good way uh, to try to cater to each of the markets, mm-hmm. uh, and I think it's something that um, uh, the Dutch um, have grown up with. Um, like they, uh, I think in general, they understand pretty well that there's different cultures, um, uh, and people do business, uh, in a different kind of way. Uh, so for instance, uh, in, uh, in the U S and the UK, people are pretty, uh, used to getting cold calls. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for instance, in the Czech Republic, uh, it's not that common, um, uh, in certain industries. So there's, there's, uh, all these different cultures to take into account. Uh, which makes it very interesting for us uh, and very challenging from an SEO point of view because run, running five websites is completely different than just running one. Yeah. Um, you need to um, yeah, uh, promote everything and stuff. But yeah, uh, uh, it's been working out well for us. I got I to gotta share this. I was wanting to see how you implemented your hreflang since you've got so many different languages to deal with. And so I viewed source on your, on your, your page. <laughs> And there's mm-hmm. a graphic made with letters, and it's awesome. I've never seen anything like this. It's got a, it's a king. Did you see it? Yes, it's uh, it's, it's the, the little man with the beer yeah. the mascot. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, this is actually the first time I hear someone mentioning it. Yeah. <laughs> Aside well, from us in the office, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's us geeks, you know, but uh, <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, that is cool. I love it. Very cool. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, we appreciate you listening. We are joined by our special uh, guest, Stephen Van Vessem. Uh, so uh, if you missed any part of today's show, you can go check it out on searchtalklive.com. I highly suggest that. Uh, so, yeah, go check it out. We're talking about continuous SEO, what should be in your toolkit to make sure that you are staying optimized continuously uh, and uh, doing everything you knew, need to do to keep your performance up. Uh, and remember, you can always go on Twitter, ask questions using hashtag Search Talk Live. Now, does the how does your site convert the language? Is it based on the IP address or uh, geolocation? Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, that's some technical stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. That's cool. Yep. Uh, so, I think one pe- one of the things that people are always talking about, especially when it comes to continuous SEO, is link building. Uh, mm-hmm. and it, it always seems to be a, it can be a touchy subject with some cause you know, they hear, uh, you know, you shouldn't be building links. You should just let them come naturally. So on and so forth. Of course, there's a lot of stuff surrounding it. So in your continuous SEO plan and, and ex- what you want to execute, what should that look like from a link building standpoint? My workflow or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there, w- when it comes to, uh, external links, uh, there's a couple of ways to go about it. Um, I, I usually start uh, with creating a strategy, like, okay, what's your long-term strategy to get more links? Um, and then um, that kind of breaks down into, okay, um, uh, like from a week-to-week basis, uh, how am I doing? What kind of links did I uh, uh, gain, gained? Um, and um, 
um, which ones uh, were uh, uh, again uh, organically mm-hmm. um, what have my competitors uh, been doing uh, from a, a backlink kind of uh, point of view uh, but also from a content point of view because it's all tied together right. um, making sure that all of the links you thought you had uh, were still there uh, and so on so um, yeah it's it's like it continues as you always a lot about project management as well right um, and it's about defining uh, like workflows and processes while leaving room for uh, creativity because that's what getting links uh, uh, is about a lot as well yeah. so a part of it for instance is being able to quickly jump on a certain topic uh, so for instance, um, uh, I've got a, uh, I used to have a client uh, in the law industry uh, in the Netherlands and they were um, very good at PR basically. So when a judge had um, given his judgment about a certain case, uh, which was uh, um, quite controversial, uh, they would uh, write about it quickly uh, and the journalist would pick up on it. And uh, it was like the best uh, PR coverage and the best backlinks you could wish for. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they're dominating the market. And uh, there's a lot of um, reasons for that. But part of it is because the client understands that PR is important, that SEO is important. Um, and in the end, it just uh, um, it brings a lot of business to them. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, what's uh, you know, I think that a lot of people struggle with in this industry is setting those expectations in the beginning, you know, like mm-hmm. getting, yeah. you know, if you're, it's, you, cause it's so important to educate a client because um, if you want to keep them long term, you got to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, yeah. they have a lot of misconceptions yeah. about what SEO actually is. And so definitely, so you got to uh, yeah. start there and, and attack those. They think yeah. we're like a, a magician or. I wish. Uh, dust I wish I was. I wish I could just wave my wand. And <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, uh, there is. And uh, at the same time, and this may not seem uh, really nice, but a, a lot of clients um, are kind of damaged goods, which means they've been um, yeah. screwed over in the past oh, yeah. by other a- SEO agencies. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, you have to uh, earn their trust. Uh, and basically make up for the wrongdoing that uh, uh, yeah others have uh, uh, done to them mm-hmm. before. Uh, but over time, like the uh, the trust and the confidence will grow. And um, my in my experience, um, yeah, you you just got to start with a pilot and kind of see if yeah. the relationship works, if there is an understanding, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, then like, okay, is it is my approach working in this market with this client? And if it does, um, uh, like, yeah, the, the, the client would be crazy not to uh, scale up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I hate running into clients like that where they've been burned by other so-called well, SEO it, agents. It seems like their past oh. relationships were just full of empty promises. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. Yeah. Trying to turn them, you can usually tell in the beginning, like if you can turn a client <laughs> yeah. to say, hey, that's not me, you know, yeah. and, and get them to understand if yeah. you educate them in the beginning, because yeah. uh, it's, you got to know when to say, you know, thank you, but no thank you to some clients. You right. know, it's just some of them are just ridiculous, but. Yeah, definitely. And like after a while, you, uh, uh, you can uh, pick up on the signals uh, uh, very well. Yeah. You kind of know, okay, this is going to work or uh, no, this is a no-go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, you want to be successful for them. And if they are not on board 100%, usually they, yeah. you know, they're gone. They, yeah. can, they can hinder yeah. their own success sometimes. Yeah. No, well, definitely. And uh, to some extent, Content King uh, can play a role in kind of giving them transparency. Yeah. Uh, not in terms of uh, backlinks and stuff, but yeah. um, like if there's... Um, agencies that are lying about the stuff they do um, uh, and it uh, comprises on-page work as well. Yeah. Um, with uh, a service like Content King, they can uh, keep track of what's what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a great point. And, it, you know, it's like it, it being a, you being on a, having a technical SEO background, you know, 
they don't see the stuff happening on the website, like changing the meta tags and all that other stuff that are so important, but you know, they don't see it. So you have to have that roadmap and, they, and go down and say, okay, this is what I did. And this is what I'm going to do. And, mm-hmm. you know, just spell it out for them. Oh, right. Um, yeah. Cause that yeah, way that, exactly. that builds trust. So total yeah. transparency. I think. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And I think in the end, that's uh, uh, yeah, that's what uh, like um, uh, your client uh, wants, um, and that's like when you're running an agency, um, uh, that's that's what you need. You need to keep overview, and you need to have the feeling that you're in charge yeah. and uh, in control. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of agencies uh, work uh, uh, kind of like, okay, we got to reel in as much business as possible. Everyone has got to be stuffed with work, like 120%. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we just got to make it work because this is the only way to grow. Yeah. When you have that amount of work to do, you got to really think about, okay, how am I uh, going to be working? I need to work smart because working harder doesn't scale. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I mean, you like you when you're it's just I, I harp on this a lot because it's just there's so many consultants and stuff that are 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 people just jumping into the SEO industry and call them SEOs, call themselves <laughs> SEOs, but they're not really SEOs. I mean, if there's one point of advice that I would give it would probably be. If you know what you're doing, <laughs> let's start with knowing what you're doing, but, uh, you know, it, educating not only clients but you know what are good seo companies versus bad and all that good stuff mm-hmm. because yeah man there's yep. so many people that get burnt get burned yeah definitely and i think uh, like when you uh, go back 10 years uh it was absolutely horrible <laughs> um uh, nowadays it's a lot better uh, i think in a lot of countries uh, there's like uh, associations of search professionals um, who are pushing out um, um, like uh, material for um, like clients to learn from? So mm-hmm. like like checklists. Okay, you're gonna uh, create a pitch for a search agency. What are the kind of questions you gotta ask, and so on. So I think there's a lot of work being done there. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, I think there's still so much to do. Yeah. Um, and there's always going to be people that will, from one day to the next, they'll call themselves the SEO experts. Yeah. Um, $99 and, and, a month will yeah. rank your website. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, like small business owners will be like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. So that's the, the, the maximum amount, what it's going to cost me. Uh, yes, I have to sign a three-year deal, but I'm sure he knows what he's talking about and he's going to do, do the work. And yeah, Absolutely. Um, sometimes they get burned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, happy clients bring you more clients. I mean, that's been yeah. my experience, yeah. word of mouth. Definitely, yeah. 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 When I was running the agency, uh, that was our uh, primary uh, uh, yeah, way of getting new clients. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's see. Uh, we got about, what, uh, six minutes? Yes. All right. So, all right. So let's talk about, um, if they want talk about yourself a little bit, let's, let's say, are you doing any, uh, speaking engagements anytime soon? Um, I've got to be doing, um, uh, a webinar to get it with, uh, Samrush, but the date mm-hmm. hasn't been set yet. Nice. Um, and I'm talking to, um, uh, several, uh, uh event organizers cool. to, uh, get a speaking slot, but, it's it's too soon to uh, um, yeah mention that yeah it's not con- uh, yeah concrete enough yeah well I mean people I'm sure I'm, have enjoyed you being on the show here and it, and probably want to listen to you some other places so if you do when you get those dates and start promoting it it'll let me know and I'll you know tweet it out sure sure I'll I'll definitely do that uh, and and for the people listening in um, uh, I'm I'm uh, looking for uh, speaking engagements. Uh, so if you think that, uh, uh, yeah, some of the stuff I mentioned is uh, uh, interesting and mm-hmm. useful, uh, yeah, get in touch. Yes. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. I really, really appreciate it. It's it's nice to, um, like I said, it's nice to have someone on the other side of the, 
the pond, so to speak. <laughs> we have a lot of we have a lot of listeners in Europe, and we have a lot of listeners all over the world, and, it, and it's great to to actually speak to somebody that you know to listen to the show and all that good stuff, and to have you on and, and share your expertise. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, I think uh, you guys are pretty well known here. Uh, indeed, really, uh, I think there's uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like a couple of weeks ago, I was in the UK. Um, and I, uh, I went to a couple of events, um, Take It of Lion in Brighton mm -hmm. and Search London in London, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was great. Uh, I met a lot of cool people um, and uh, a lot of people there uh, knew Search Talk Alive as well. Oh, wow. So that's I think you guys are doing really good. <laughs> uh, and there's, there's a lot of SEO uh, being done here as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you uh, very much for having me. Uh huh. Bye bye, hey guys. Thank you for being on the uh, listening to the show, Search Talk Live. We are here every Tuesday from three thirty to four thirty Eastern Standard Time. Please uh, tune in next week. We've got uh, let's see, we got Mark Gorl, uh from Simrush uh, going to be on the show. We're going to be talking about machine learning and user intent. That is one of my subjects I love to talk about. Well, I like to talk about all this stuff because we're always talking seo and geek stuff that uh, and and I, I appreciate your time spending an hour with us and geeking out um listen to previous episodes go to searchtalklive.com or you can go to sprecker that's p i'm sorry p <laughs> s p r e a k e r dot com go there follow us uh, sign up there it's free join us on uh and follow us on the episode so because that way when we go live you get an email that says, hey, Search Talk Live is on, and you can jump right in and listen to us. Yeah, and remember, it doesn't have to be during a show, or it can be after or before a show. You can do Search Talk Live, uh, hashtag Search Talk Live on Twitter, uh, and ask your questions. You can also shoot us, shoot me or Caleb an email. Uh, you can go to Robert at, or you can go to, but you can email me, Robert at searchtalklive.com or Caleb at searchtalklive.com. If you've listened to the show in the past and you are an expert in your field, whether it be content marketing, social media, search engine optimization, God, conversion optimization, user uh, UI designer, we would love to have you on the show. Uh, we are booked up until June right now because we uh, uh, the show has been such a success. But uh, we would love to have you on if you could go to our website and submit a form there. Um, we will be, as you're listening to me now, I'm going to be at PubCon South Florida. Uh, please, if you like the show and you, you, you listen to us, please stop by, say hi to me. I appreciate that. That would be awesome. Um, let's see. I'm going to make sure I cover everything here. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook. We're at search, or search talk live on Facebook. We also at search talk live on Twitter, but, uh, yes, we can, uh, Come to the website, check us out, sign up to our newsletter. Uh, the newsletter is your source for up-to-date information. We have started uh, uh, transcribing all the shows, so you will be able to uh, go and get the, the transcripts if you like. Um, let's see what else. I think that's it. It covers it all. How much time we got, Dave? Ah, one minute. Okay. So... Thank you again. Listen to the show. Tune in next week. Uh, we are going to have, like I said, um, Mark Goral of SCM or Sim Rush. We're going to discuss machine learning and user experience. Thanks again for listening to the show, and thank you for support. Tweet out, share the show with everybody, get the word out. Thank you. Bye bye. Search Talk Live is a presentation of the Robert Palmer family of companies.